Hello everybody, I Saleh is here with another video. Today's uh, topic is uh, the comparison between ZBrush, ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini. We want to see what are the similarities and what are the differences between these three software from Pixelogic and uh, each of them uh, are suitable for what kind of artist. Basically ZBrush Core Mini uh, is uh, great for artists who want to start to learn digital sculpting and experience that and don't want to pay money for that because it's free and uh, but it's uh, very limited and this um, basically uh, the limit helps artists to focus on just one uh, topic which is digital sculpting and not uh, get distracted by other features that are inside of ZBrush Core and ZBrush uh, regular ZBrush. Uh, ZBrush Core uh, ZBrush Core is uh, a good software for basically individuals who want to do the digital sculpting and use uh, other features like uh, basically uh, texture painting in its uh, basic level and uh, it's using Dynamesh, uh, it's basically Zero Meshert, uh, which is automatic retopology inside of uh, ZBrush Core and ZBrush uh, regular version of ZBrush. Uh, but the other features that are inside of ZBrush and are not inside of ZBrush Core, you can access them um, through different softwares. Uh, for example, 3D packages uh, like Blender, which is free. Uh, like you know, creating a very organized base mesh, doing a UV layout, and I will get into them at more in depth in a second. Okay, let's uh, start with uh, uh, basically its uh, similarities between ZBrush and ZBrush Core regarding creating a base mesh for the beginning. Uh, as you see it, we have when we open ZBrush, this is by the way, this is uh, ZBrush, uh, not ZBrush Core or ZBrush Core Mini. You see that uh, you have uh, folders like uh, ZSphere's, Zizu, and Mannequins. If you click on any of them, you get access to the um, basically armatures for beginning of your project. For example, let's say I want to start to create a character, but just double clicking on this one, I have a mannequin ready here and hitting A, it shows basically the preview of the mesh and uh, I can go here, advance uh, and make adaptive skin, create a skin out of this basically armature and ZSV and later sculpt on top of that. Okay. This is the first thing that we need to consider that both ZBrush and ZBrush Core has uh, these folders and the pre-made library for us and that's a great advantage and this is Zizu it has many many animals if you want to create if you are into animals you can use this to have a base for your animals but ZBrush Core Mini doesn't have uh, these libraries and this uh, it's basically advantage uh, and in both uh, in the three of the software you can import and export uh, meshes um, based on your needs and let's talk about the brushes uh, in these three softwares when you hit B you can access to a huge list of uh, brushes inside of ZBrush but in ZBrush Core definitely as the name implies they are they have the core brushes and it's uh, more limited but again you don't lose uh, anything you can if you have ZBrush Core and you have limited brushes you can be a little bit create uh, creative and uh, create the brushes that you have inside of ZBrush some of them so 
I believe you don't you, you won't lose anything specifically because uh, for me when I'm using ZBrush I use uh, mostly it's how can I say 10 or 15 of these brushes and I more probably never used some of them at all uh, but for ZBrush Core a mini the no amount of brushes are again much limited in comparison to the two other softwares and uh, inside of ZBrush let me open a new project okay. ZBrush and ZBrush Core Mini you have that ability to add subdivisions let's add here this is where I'm delete this one Uh, if you see the number here by clicking divide you're dividing this and make it denser and denser and you can cycle through the different subdivision levels that you have here but since ZBrush uh, Core Mini you don't have this feature this feature is just uh, inside of ZBrush and ZBrush Core the other thing that you need to notice uh, inside of ZBrush and ZBrush Core you have access uh, to the sub tools you can have different sub tools inside of a tool and you can create folders for example let's create a new folder type that folder and put your sub tools inside of the folders to uh, organize your scene and the other thing that uh, I want to mention uh, it's uh, both uh, three of this uh, software uh, have the uh, Windows and Mac version, and they support a uh, 64 bits um, uh, basically operating systems. That's a great news. <laughs> uh, ZBrush, but uh, regarding the number of the uh, polys uh, or the, I think polys. Uh, the polys that uh, ZBrush can uh, support inside of uh, itself uh, are about the 10, 100 million, 100 million uh, polys inside of uh, ZBrush Core is 20 million, mm, the one fifth of uh, the uh, original ZBrush and inside of ZBrush Core Mini is just 1 million which is uh, much less than uh, basically uh, original version of ZBrush uh, and here if you want to have uh, another cube sub tool and we move it here there is a feature inside of ZBrush and let's say we get rid of this folder okay and let's put it on subdivisions this box and if you go to render and I'm looking for here if you enable live boolean you can see in the real time basically uh, your boolean operations here but this live boolean is not available inside of uh, ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini uh, again, this is not a big deal. You can still have Boolean inside of ZBrush Core, but if you want to see it in the real life, it makes life a little bit easier. This is the only difference, in my opinion. And this Gizmo is called Gizmo 3D. It's just uh, available inside of ZBrush, and uh, ZBrush Core is not available inside of ZBrush Core Mini. And when you click on this gear button, you have access to the list of modifiers, bend, twist, and uh, a lot of them. Uh, but in ZBrush Core, again, you have the core of these deformers, and uh, you have some of them that are really important. Again, I barely use uh, many of them here. I usually use bend arc, bend curve, deformer, and sometimes twist. 
is here twist and taper but I barely use extensor extender uh, sorry extender offsets multi slice and many of them here but this is for this one and the other things that is advanced inside of ZBrush in comparison to ZBrush Core is Zeremesher. Zeremesher, as you see here, you have a lot of options. Zeremesher is the tool for automatic and topology and uh, it's manipulating this uh, basically sliders and buttons. You can get different re re results for hard surface and organic models. The other thing again that is advanced inside of ZBrush is dynamic subdivision. When you click on dynamic subdivision, it shows a preview of uh, your uh, mesh when it's actually subdivided. But here, with, uh, it doesn't actually subdivide it, it's just a preview. It shows what will happen if you actually subdivide it and how it how does it look like and how much does it shrink and how your uh, basically edges get rounded and this kind of stuff you can see it with dynamic subdivision but it's very limited inside of ZBrush uh, core but again I never use most of these sliders and buttons here just I hit uh, it's dynamic subdivision or the short before that is D yeah that's it uh, for 3D painting, when you want to paint inside of if you P uh, and change the color, oh, before changing the color, let's fill object and after that, change the color. Uh, it's inside of ZBrush, the tools for basically vertex painting, painting on top of the vertexes are more advanced and you have a lot of tools regarding that but again if you have zbrush core or zbrush core mini and use uh, another 3d package uh, it's, i think blender you can't and it's free and if you don't have you can do it in maya or inside of substance painter which is specifically for this purpose uh, it's spotlight the other topic that is inside of uh, is just for ZBrush. If you go here, turn it on. Let's place a picture, turn it on. This is for projections. And if you want to project, for example, if you have a face of a character and you have a texture, uh, a picture of uh, a face, and you want to project this, and basically the skin color. And skin detail uh, RGB data on the um, surface of your sculpture you can use this spotlight uh, and on top of that this spotlight you can create a mesh using an alpha importing an alpha and create a mesh based on an alpha again this is not a big deal if you have a you can use two other 3D packages or some Substance Painter to do this projection. But again, ZBrush makes life easier <laughs> and have everything in one place. Uh, the other option that just ZBrush has and the other two doesn't have ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini is a Gozi. As you see the description on the left side of the Gozi it says export current subtools to Gozi enable applications. Enable applications. You can simply by hitting Gozi you can export your uh, meshes to the different software that are installed on your uh, machine and you install the bridge, the Gozi bridge for those here if your preferences Gozi and if you install your softwares here you can simply export it to those software but if you, uh, you have zbrush core you simply can import and export buttons the same that you're doing in other sub 3d packages you so you won't lose any import any uh, serious thing in this way if i say it's better but it's it's it's, it's easier to use this cozy but 
still you can use import and export inside of uh, Go, uh, ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core B. And the Z modeler is the brush Z modeler here. That is for uh, basically poly modeling. The same thing that you have in other 3D packages. As you see, you can add uh, as loop, extrude, it's poly and so on and so forth you can use this Z modeler inside of ZBrush to do the poly modeling but it doesn't exist inside of uh, ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini personally uh, I found the Z modeler is a little bit confusing and it's a little bit hard to use so I prefer to use Maya for uh, poly modeling whenever I have a uh, something to model like hard surfaces uh, I create the base inside of uh, Maya and later bring it inside of ZBrush to add details on top of the base that I created uh, the other thing that is inside of ZBrush and other the other tool software doesn't have it are these 3D layers if I'm right these 3D layers uh, you can uh, record, create a new layer and record whatever you are doing here. For example, if I uh, be move, if I move here and my la layer is not recording, after that, if I turn it off, disable that recording, I turn it on and off. You see can see the difference whenever you are not sure about the way that you want to sculpt and the changes that you want to apply you can simply add apply uh, it's basically a 3d layer here and see the difference when you turn on and off the layer fiber mesh is an option for creating see different type of hair grass and this kind of a stuff uh, it's personally never I used it I uh, prefer for example in Maya I'd use exchange or if is it for game character or game prop use hair cards and I'm sure inside of uh, blender which is free you have the ability to create hairs there too okay the other one are here ray mesh nano mesh and micro let's see micro meshes if I can find it here Yeah, there is another one called MicroMesh, uh, ArrayMesh, NanoMesh, and MicroMesh. These three are just for uh, ZBrush. It's, uh, as the name implies, uh, it's the creates uh, they create copies and instances of the meshes that you have, in um, an organized way, along the different axes for you. For example, you want to repeat this cube inside of uh, along the x-axis uh, with the space between each cube, uh, with 10 of this cube along the x-axis with that uh, space between them, for example, 20 centimeter. You can use array mesh. Uh, nano mesh is uh, another option to create uh, basically meshes uh, for example on top of each polygons each polygon that you have on a mesh this is good for creating armors these are the things that you can find it inside of other 3d packages again but they are inside of zbrush and they don't exist inside of uh, zbrush core and zbrush core mini uh, masking inside of zbrush when you're working you want to mask some part to not be affected by uh, basically sculpting when you're sculpting see this part doesn't uh, is not affected 
at the options that you have for masking are very very advanced inside of ZBrush and the other options that you have are polygrouping for example if you hear auto group change the groups for you you can create different polygroups based on your needs if you hit group visible okay right now you have two different polygroups and simply uh, uh, hide and unhide part of that to enable you to work easier on your models and this uh, polygrouping and masking options that you see that are too advanced uh, inside of ZBrush they are more basic inside of ZBrush core and uh, in ZBrush core I believe they don't exist uh, just masking simple masking I I think so it exists instead of ZBrush core me uh, UV mapping is exists inside of ZBrush and it's not uh, exist inside of uh, ZBrush core and core mini but again you can create your UV mapping do UV mapping and create UV layouts instead of other 3d packages like blender for free and stroke options that you have for your brushes for example you can have a uh, drag rectangle a spray different type of uh, stroke options you have here and for the brushes you have a lot of settings here but they are very limited and basic inside of ZBrush core and in instead of ZBrush core mini uh, they don't exist uh, these two menus uh, and decimation master decimation master is another uh, great tool here inside of ZBrush let's find it decimation ah uh, yes here decimation master decimation master is an object when your mesh is really dense and you want to decrease uh, it's the density but keep the details two things at the same time decreasing the density and keeping the detail is very powerful tool inside of ZBrush and as you see is very advanced inside of ZBrush uh, but in ZBrush core is limited and in ZBrush core mini the good news is exists but is much limiter than the two other softwares uh, and the new features that uh, ZBrush recently added to the software are dynamics for simulation, simulation of class, a lot of things, and class brushes. Let's see if we can. Yeah, class. There are different class brushes. You can find it here. Uh, they exist inside of just ZBrush and not ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini. But uh, it's, again, the dynamics exist in other 3d packages too you can use other 3d packages if you want and after that when you do simulation and you want to sculpt on top you can bring it into either zbrush core mini or zbrush core and sculpt on top of uh, the model that already got simulated in other 3d packages uh, it's bpr rendering instead of zbrush that, which is um, uh, stands for best preview render uh, is more advanced inside of ZBrush in comparison to the ZBrush core uh, and you can access to different layer passes inside of ZBrush which uh, doesn't exist inside of ZBrush core and core mini uh, the other thing is that the size of your documents the size of documents you can't crank it up all the way to 8k as you see here but in ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini is the size of your screen and you cannot change it uh, ZBrush Core for import and export uh, almost supports all types of files except FPX and 
the other t tool that they added instead of ZBrush a while ago, it was Sculptures Pro. Sculptures Pro adds basically a local uh, subdivision for places that you want to add more resolution to that and add more detail. It doesn't subdivide the whole of the image to make it really dense and heavy, just adds on part of the mesh. And the good news is that it's available in all three software, ZBrush Core, ZBrush, ZBrush Core, and ZBrush Core Mini. And one of the t tips about uh, ZBrush Core uh, Mini is that it's not available for commercial use. It's free, but no, not for commercial use. And as I mentioned, ZBrush Core Mini doesn't have uh, it's Dynamesh, Z-Sphere, Dynamesh is another great method of uh, basically uh, here adding resolution to your mesh is dynamically and automatically when you're pulling part of your mesh uh, or pushing uh, inside it's basically even out the resolution uh, basically the mesh uh, around the area that you add the changes there so it is a great way to method of sculpting but it doesn't exist in ZBrush Core Mini unfortunately and yeah and the final tip here is that all these three software, ZBrush, ZBrush Core, and ZBrush Core Mini, almost have the same system requirements. That yeah, it's despite the fact that ZBrush can handle more, uh, it's basically polys per object, but uh, it's based on the information inside of Pixelogic websites, all these three software uh, have a minimum. Uh, the same minimum system requirements but obviously if you have more powerful systems for specifically ZBrush and ZBrush Core uh, it's, you can create more advanced and uh, complicated uh, objects and models, 3D models uh, I hope today's video about this comparison helps you guys and again at the end if you are a beginner and you want to learn just digital sculpting ZBrush Cormony is a good choice for you because it's free and you can experiment uh, digital sculpting without distracting with a lot of tools and buttons inside of ZBrush and ZBrush Cormony. ZBrush Core is uh, because it's cheaper in comparison to ZBrush, a regular ZBrush is good for individuals that they want to use a 3D package like Blender, which is free. Uh, besides that, to create their awesome sculpts. And ZBrush, uh, the regular ZBrush is for professionals or companies. They want to create a very professional ad ad advanced works. And yeah, thank you so much for your time. And I hope this comparison was helpful for you guys. Have a great day.